Hey guys, welcome to a video that I am putting up. Um, I want to say it's another one of my tips and strategies. I'm trying not to put up more tips and strategies, um, and that's because I've already put up 25 of those videos, and I think this is going to be the second video uh, that I've recorded. I don't think I've uploaded anything yet at this point for this is the new map, uh, Sandhawk. And what I kind of wanted to do um, with this video is Lately, I, I haven't been playing as much PUBG as far as streaming it. I still play PUBG, uh, but I'm not streaming it as much. And what I've actually been doing is playing more Fortnite. And what I've kind of been noticing is some of the people that I play with, you know, they play Fortnite, but they don't play PUBG. And it's just because, you know, they're so used to playing Fortnite, the sort of the strategy is, is different. And that is the truth. The strategy in how you play Fortnite compared to PUBG is completely different. They're both great games. They both have, um, you know, you have to have skill to play uh, Fortnite for sure. It's just, it's a different mindset in what you're doing when you play PUBG. So what I wanted to do is really just try to reach out and make a video that I would hope I could kind of get to Fortnite players that just kind of help explain, you know, what goes through a PUBG player's mind, you know, when they're playing and sort of the things that are happening. So if they want to play PUBG, you know, you definitely can. And there's some things and, and to kind of learn and things to pick up on what to do. So you can always go back and watch my tips and strategy videos as well. Um, because my play style is sort of geared to being slow and cautious and sneaky. Um, that's just kind of like how I like to play, but at the same time, uh, there's things that you can kind of glean from that uh, if you sit down to play. So what we're going to go ahead and do, we're actually going to jump into sort of the end of this game. I'm going to pause real quick and just kind of show you what had happened. So uh, a whole bunch of people have already died at this point. Um, so where I jump, I'm basically down in the middle of the circle and there's basically no one around me at this point uh like i'm completely alone i don't know that uh but i end up moving south once i get south the circle ends up being north um but i'm basically always in the circle so i actually don't even see anybody to really take shots until the end of the game so what i'm going to do is actually we're going to get to the end of the game we're going to go real slow and I'm going to explain everything that's happening and explain what's going through my brain as everything's kind of unfolding. And then after that, actually play the video um, with no commentary. Just play the first person perspective of everything that happens. And you'll kind of be able to hear me explaining all this. And then you'll actually kind of see it in real time. And that should kind of show you, like, this is something that you can do, too. You can play like this, too. You can play and play and have fun, even if you end up not getting a chicken dinner. But getting the chicken dinner is not sort of as difficult as some people make it out to be. Um, you know, I'm not the world's greatest PUBG player, but I get consistent chicken dinners. I get them all the time, and I have a ton of fun doing it. And that's why I play the game. No matter how frustrating this game is, I keep playing because it's so much fun. So with that, let's get to the end of the video. Um, and so you can kind of see everything that happens. Okay, guys, so we are to the end of this video, and so I'm going to kind of get you up to speed. So you can see where we were earlier with the circles. Now the circle is coming in. So I am down here on this side. Now there was a fight that had just happened not too long ago with a guy who was right over here. This is uh, Sir Smoke-A-Lot, uh, 702. So anyway, this guy... He had just taken out uh, Edward right there. Now, I knew that this guy, I heard these gunshots. I'm laying down over here in the grass. I know I can hear these shots. I also knew that there was a guy that was down here in this building. Uh, this is a guy named Berserk. He's got a ghillie suit on. And so I know that these two guys are over in this area. Now, I haven't engaged anybody. I haven't even taken a shot at anybody. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of get up to speed here. I, I, what I'm doing is actually trying to get into position to look in through this window to take out uh, this guy. Now, Berserk ends up seeing Sir Smoke a lot. Boom, boom, boom. Takes him down. He's got the uh, AWM sniper rifle. Takes him out. So... I'm trying to sight this in. I'm trying to see this guy. Now, the result right there is 
uh, Berserk just took a shot at Darth Matrix. Now, Darth Matrix had worked his way over when he first heard that shot, moved over to here. Now, what he's going to end up doing is running up to the top of this hill, and it's kind of funny what happens. Uh, annoying, but funny. Uh, so, Berserk uh, actually hits him right here, right there. He gets nailed. And what this guy does is he lays down, he heals up, and then he actually, instead of sighting in Berserk, he actually sights me in. So he starts taking shots at me. Now, the reason this sucks is because I know what's going on between these two, but I'm waiting for Berserk to hop out of this building, and then I am going to basically get this guy down. Because um, what you can tell at this point is where this next circle is. Now, there is 31 seconds to go. Now, you can see this line right here is because right then is when Darth Matrix, or Maddox, whatever, uh, he just took a shot at me, which is hilarious. It's like, dude, leave me alone. I'm trying to get this guy down. So anyway, this guy's taking a shot at me, and the result from this is I have to get up and I have to take off running. He doesn't hit me. I don't get hit by this guy. And uh, I switch, I only play in first person, but when you do a replay, you can actually switch it into third person. So I like to do that just to kind of show you. Now the result from this is Berserk is all the way down here. The um, timer's coming down, so the circle is about to come in. And so he comes over and he actually sights me in and nails me right there. And I have to start bobbing and weaving to get away from him. And then the circle hits this guy. Once the circle hits him, he's got to take off running. So we'll switch back over to me. And here I am, and I am healing up. So at this point, we're going to kind of follow me, and I'm going to explain everything that I'm doing. And I'm going to go kind of back and forth in between um, regular speed and slow it down, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So... Here I am, I am running down through here. Now I can hear gunshots. I just heard Kill Me Softly right here. Um, so, you know, I know that there's people right over here. So I'm running down. Now here's the thing. Anytime that you are approaching buildings, especially um, near the end of the game, one, I try not to get into buildings, but on top of that, um, you know, if I'm approaching this building, you know, I'm being super cautious and careful because I figure there's probably going to be people inside it. It's just people gravitate to buildings. So I'm going to slow it down right here a little bit. So I pop around this corner. I see this guy. It's just take, take him out. Now, if you notice, I could tell that he was looking in a certain direction. So what that's telling me immediately what I'm thinking is, okay, there's somebody else right over uh, where this guy was looking. So I run down here. Now, here's the thing. You know, I just get the guy down. I am not interested in healing up at this point. I don't want to heal up. I don't need to take any booze. And the last thing I want to do is raid this guy. It's out in the open. And, guy, I mean, look, there's only six of us left at this point. So... It doesn't make any sense for me to raid this guy. I've had the whole game to kind of loot. I've got all my stuff. Don't loot at this point. If you're still looting at this point, you're in trouble. So turn the corner here, jump up, and I see this guy in this window. Now, when I see this guy in this window, uh, I immediately see him so I know what's about to happen. So if I bust through this door, what this guy is going to do is basically light me up. So I'm going to do what I just call a stutter step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the door, but I'm not going to go through it. I'm going to open up the door, and then I'm actually going to move backwards because I still want to give off the noise that I am running on the wood because that guy is going to hear it. So if he hears it and he hears me moving, but he doesn't see me, now he's going to second guess whether I'm coming through the door or if he's going to have to shoot out the window. But that's just enough time for me to bust back through the door and to get the guy out. So I open it up, I move back, make the noise, come back in and I'm able to get the guy down so I get those two guys down in about 10 seconds right there so I'm still trying to heal up I try to use this door uh, get behind it make sure I get it closed 
Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and kind of heal up at this point. Now, in PUBG, um, depending on where you hear noise, that tells you where somebody is. And what I mean by that is you make a distinct noise when you're in a building, you make distinct noise when you're on dirt, you make a distinct noise when you're on grass. So there is somebody who is right in front of me. There is uh, it's Kill Me Softly, who we heard earlier uh, shooting. And I can hear them in the building over there. But then all of a sudden, I don't hear them in the building. Now I hear them running on the dirt. So I can hear them in the building. Now I hear them on the dirt. So I turn to this door first thinking he might be rushing in. Then I see this guy. And it doesn't show it in the replay, but in the real game, I actually hit that guy right there. And um, I saw the blood come out. So once I saw the blood come out... Um, that's when I knew, like, okay, I just damaged this guy, so he's not going to rush back out this door. So I'm looking into this window, but they don't rush over to here. So what I decide to do is, like, okay, I'm going to just chuck a grenade in there. And once I chuck the grenade, the only way out of here, uh, basically, he's got to run to the back, go out here, go out the front. So you can see the grenade. There's the grenade, lands right there. Now, this guy doesn't hear it. I don't know why he didn't hear it, but... Grenade goes off. I get this guy down. So, you know, that's three... Uh, three guys down pretty quickly. Uh, so, I get that guy down. So, now I'm moving up. So, now there's four of us left. So, now I'm running up the hill. Now, you can see basically where... And actually, they put this feature in here, which is pretty cool. You can make the map bigger. Now, Nibzilla and Darth Matrix are over here on the other side. And it's a pretty interesting fight. Uh, I don't know how Nibzilla got out of this. He got super lucky. Um, you'll kind of see. Because he gets lit up. And Darth Matrix is the guy who was shooting at me earlier. Darth Maddox, however you say the guy's name. I don't know. He's just able to get a bunch of headshots. But you can see, I mean, this guy has got no health at this point. So I'm over here. I hear all this. I see the guy go down. Now, here's what I know at this point is that wherever I just heard those gunshots, I know it's on the other side of that one building. But see, now I hear that grenade go off. When I hear that grenade go off, what I know is the one guy that just got down uh, in the kill count, Darth Maddox, Matrix, whatever, um, it, the third guy, whoever's last, they're the one who just chucked that grenade. So I know that those two guys are actually close to one another. So what I do is I hear those gunshots as well. So I just start chucking grenades. Now, what I was trying to do was chuck a grenade into that building. But here's the other thing a grenade does. A grenade, when it goes off and there's people who are somewhat close by, even if you know they're not taking damage, it will screw with what they can hear. So it does allow you to move up. So I chuck that grenade. It's helping to sort of disguise my footsteps. And I'm coming up to the top of the hill. But when I get to the top, I see movement right there from Nibzilla. And he does not see me. So once I see this guy, it's like, okay, let's go ahead. Let's cook another grenade. Let's chuck it over at him. And I threw a really good grenade and I threw it right over here and it goes off it does not kill him but it does do damage and then I just stand up and I take the guy out so there we go we got this guy down so here's now what I know I know that it's now a heads up and whoever the last guy in the game is um, they know where I'm at and I don't know where they are so what I'm doing now for sort of the rest of the game is I'm trying to be really, really quiet because I'm trying to listen and I'm trying to figure out, okay, where's the last guy? I don't want to go running around the map. I, I don't want to give away my position any further than I need to. What I need to do is try to make sure that I can figure out where this guy is because as it, as it stands right now, he knows where I'm at. So I go ahead set this back to regular speed so I chuck a grenade in this building now I do not think that this guy's in this building the reason I don't think that is because he probably would have come out of this building already uh, to get me down when that fight that just took place happened but and he didn't but I go ahead and just chuck a grenade in for good measure and at this point this guy still knows where I'm at in the general area so I might as well just 
chuck a grenade and i also had what's called a buku <laughs> I, had, I had a ton of grenades so i'm just chucking grenades like they're you know it's candy um so what i'm doing is i'm trying to just listen and i'm checking this building just making sure he's not here but i was confident this guy was not in this building so what this basically is telling me at this point is that this guy make the map big so I'm right here, this map is set, this is where the next circle is, so I'm confident that this guy is probably over here on this side or he's in this building. Um, he could be over on this side, I just don't think he is. But you never know. So what I do is I kind of take a moment and I'm looking out the window just to make sure that you know if I see the guy I can take a shot. But I come out this window and I start working my way over here now when I get out I actually throw a really bad grenade I'm trying to throw it into that window it does not go in um, it goes short but anyway I use that opportunity again because it disguises your footsteps and I run over and what I do is I actually jump up and I'm looking in the windows and you'll see it do, do, do. here I go chucking my grenade I always try to cook the grenade a little bit. Run over. Jump once, don't see him. Jump twice, don't see him. Now here's the thing, I don't want to get in this building at this point. The reason I don't, you don't want to get into a building, especially heads up, like I said before, it gives off a very distinct sound. So if I get in this building, now I've eliminated any possibility that this guy doesn't know where I'm at. Because if he hears me in that building, he knows that noise. So I don't want to give this guy more information than I need to. He's probably still going to know where I'm at, the general area. But as long as I'm out on the dirt, he's not going to know exactly where I'm at. Not exactly. But the building eliminates any doubt at all. So where he currently is, is sitting right over here. And what he's trying to do is just wait and see if I'm going to pop around this corner. He's kind of listening to see where I'm going to be. I work my way down these boards, which was kind of funny because it sounds like I'm in the building. I didn't mean for that to happen. But I jump up. I take a shot right through this window just in case this guy was, like, hanging in the corner. But I don't see him. Okay, so I move back. I get to cover right there because here's now what I know. I know that this guy, because that circle's moved in, I know that this guy is right over here on this corner or he's in this building because I've eliminated every other place for him to be. The only other place that he could be right now is right here. And to be honest, it doesn't make sense for him to be right here. The reason it doesn't make sense is for him to be right here on this side of uh, this building, this means he would have had to have been here earlier. If he had been here earlier, I'll make that small. If he had been here earlier, he would have been peeking around this corner taking shots at me, and he didn't. So that tells me it just doesn't make sense for him to be sitting right here. It just doesn't make sense because he would have moved over here. He would have taken those shots. So I hope that makes sense. So it's like the process of elimination, figuring out where somebody basically has to be, what makes the most sense. So then the next thing I notice is the fact that I'm looking at this building and there are no windows on this building. Now, unbeknownst to me, uh, there's no windows on this building right on the side. And that plays a factor here in a second. But anyway, so basically what I know at this point is, okay, this guy's either in that building and he's going to have to come out of the building or he's already on the outside. So I see that guy chuck a grenade. I take some shots at him. And so now here's what I tell myself, like, okay, this guy knows where I'm at, I need to move, because I'm a big believer in moving once you take shots. So what I do is I hop into this building, I come over here, and I'm trying to go really slow, and you'll see it, and it kind of makes sense. Like, I'm trying to, like, take a step and stop, take a step and stop, and I'm trying not to make noise, because I don't want this guy to hear me if I, if I can avoid it. Because if I can make this guy believe that I am still over here on this side and he doesn't hear me in the building, then he won't know I'm in here and I might have the element of surprise. Now, unfortunately, there's no window on this side, so I have to end up coming out this window. So you can see how I'm going slow, step slow, go cautious. Then I realize, like, crap. And... 
uh, I'll, I'll rewind that real quick uh, just so you can actually if something happens there it's a little bit important so that's when that guy just chucked that grenade so we'll kind of just show it from my perspective and I'll slow it down <coughs> excuse me okay so once I get into that building and, I, and I'm coming through that's when I realized like okay crap I have to make noise now I got to get out this window because the circle's going to end up moving in at some point um, and this guy basically knows where I'm at now um, I have to get out I can't take shots through the window because there's no window so I got to get out so when I get out I see this guy right here so I can see this guy moving getting into that building so I kind of move up it looks like I'm moving right but I'm not I'm just I was just trying to adjust uh, my mouse and so I see the door open up so here's what I know at this point this guy has to either come out the, the, the door or he's basically gonna hang out in there but at the end of the day I've got all the advantage because there's no way I'm going to rush this guy at this point it doesn't make any sense now I'm not trying to fault this guy because he ends up doing something that I think is a mistake but I understand what he's thinking this guy takes sort of the opportunity he wants to just end the match right now and so he pulls out a sniper rifle and what he's trying to do is to get a headshot on me now I'm already sighted down so here's what this guy basically has to do he has to get a headshot because if he doesn't get a headshot it's gonna be all over and he does not get a headshot he does a lot of damage but he's using an AWM um, he basically has to fire the weapon then he's got to reload it he doesn't have enough time to switch over to his other weapon if I'm him and I'm in that position I'm not trying to use my sniper rifle at that point like I get what he's thinking but at the end of the day you want to have out your automatic weapon at that point that way you can kind of move into the shot take a few shots move out that way you can actually get in a few hits etc etc so once he hits me with the sniper rifle it's like okay it's over i you know i got him and sure enough it is so you know we get down to seven people um and i'm one of them and i end up taking out five of the six in a matter of just you know sort of a few minutes there and so i hope all that makes sense and so now i'll put up the video of just like in real time but you know the thing i'm just trying to stress uh, especially to fortnite players is you know the the jump from Fortnite to PUBG it's not like it's a jump I mean it's it's a you know it's a lateral jump they're two very distinct games but having good experience in either one allows you to play the other one and understand a bunch of the elements it's just some of the little things like this are the things that you don't really encounter in Fortnite um, Fortnite is just a different type of game so um, you know I'm not great at Fortnite, but I'm not bad, but I'm not terrible because I've got a background in PUBG. And it's the same thing that Fortnite players should expect when playing Fortnite and then jumping into PUBG. You're not going to be terrible. You've got a good background. It's learning some of the little things like this and then just putting it into practice over and over and over. But if you do, I promise you're going to have fun. PUBG is a great game. Uh, it's just a different mode of thinking. So anyway, guys, I'm going to sign off with what I'm saying because I'm not going to do any co more commentary for the rest of it, but put up the rest so you can kind of see everything I talked about and just see it in real time. So thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. We will see you next time. See ya.